Welcome back to the channel. I am Epic Assassin and this is the Epic Gaming Channel. Today we're going to be recovering the Pokemane transition video that I did on the channel. It was my fifth video on the channel back when I had no clue what I was doing. I still kind of don't, but tomato, tomato. Um, if you've been here a while, you'll notice that I've grown some hair and I'm not climbing through the window again. That ain't happening. But we're going to recover this transition. I'm going to go through this tutorial again, and this time I'm not going to leave any confusion. That way everyone can follow along easily. So without further ado, let's get into this video. All right, so first things first, we got to create our composition. So right here, composition name, just name the composition, whatever you want to. For now, I'm just going to leave it at comp one because I am not going to save this transition. I've already done this three times and I keep scrapping the recording because I'm a bad YouTuber, but we're going to leave it at comp one. We're going to leave the width at 1920 and the height at 1080. And we're going to leave the duration at 30 seconds because really it's going to get cut down to about six seconds anyways. It just gives you a little bit more room to work with for now. So first things first, once you create your composition, first thing you're going to do is go ahead and create your rectangle. This is going to be the mask that shows that image or video you have in the transition up underneath. It doesn't have to be green, but I'm just going to keep it green for continuity sake. So we're going to go to this little transform tab here. And we're going to move the rotation until we get it to somewhere we like. That looks good to me. About 14. Then we're going to find our file that we're going to bring in. I'm going to use my new branding something I'm working on. We're going to put that below the rectangle. I'm going to right click on the rec rectangles layer. I'm going to move down here so you can see. I'm going to right click on that. And we're going to go to blending mode. Come all the way down to the bottom and hit stencil alpha. Now you can see that that image is right up underneath that rectangle. It's not going to show on the outside of it. From there, you can take your little pointer and move this around and you'll see that it, no matter where you move it, it's just going to show that image underneath. So once we get to this point, we're going to hit control, click both of these layers, let off of control, right click, and then we're going to hit pre-compose. Once we've done that, don't worry, we'll come back to that later when we start animating. But for now, we're just going to leave that alone. We're going to go up here and create another rectangle. Make sure you don't create a mask, but another rectangle layer. So we're going to just go ahead and make it a lot bigger than the frame. That way we have plenty of room to work with. And then we're going to bring this up under that pre-composition. So now you can already see it's starting to come together a little bit. Now all we have to do is animate this. So first I want to go ahead and animate the pre-composition because that's going to help me out when I go to animate the green screen layer because sometimes you'll get little spots where the green screen will show where it's not supposed to. So we're just going to go ahead and cut that out. That way we can get the good animation first time around. So double click on that pre-composition, it'll bring you back to where you can animate the things inside of it. So we're going to hit the drop down on that shape layer, go to transform, and we're going to drag this until it's all the way off on the right or left side of the screen, depends on where you want the transition to come in from. Once we have it off the side of the screen, we're going to get it a little bit closer. We're just going to hit this start keyframe button. As you'll see, it starts a keyframe at zero seconds. We're going to drag this to, I'll say one and a half seconds, somewhere in that area. Then we're move this position to where we want it to be at that point. It looks like a good spot for it to stop. 
All right, so once we get it to where we want it to stop for a second, that way it shows off your logo, shows off the little video plan behind, we're gonna drag the time scale out, that way it knows to stop there. We're gonna leave it at around two and a half seconds. We're gonna hit this little keyframe button here. That note, that lets it know to stay there for a second. So now that it knows to stay there for a second, we're gonna come all the way to about five seconds. We don't really want the transition to be that long. So once we get it to where we want the transition to end, we're just gonna move this to where it's off the other side of the screen. You can just drag the image with your pointer, but I'm using the lateral scale down there and just dragging it on there. That way I can verify that I'm having a straight line all the way across. Because if you do it with your pointer, sometimes you'll go up and down. It just makes it look a lot cleaner if you just drag it with the lateral. That way it's a straight line all the way across. So we're gonna drag this composition to where it ends. And if we wanna replay it back, you can just hit your space bar and it'll go ahead and play it. Now we could just add in the green screen and that makes a very clean transition, but we're going to take it a step further. I'm going to animate the background just a little bit and make it to where once the transition starts moving again, the logo kind of goes with it. I'll show you how that's done. Very similar. I'm going to drag this until that keyframe where the, where the transition starts moving again. And we're going to create another position frame for the image underneath. Now we're going to drag it all the way to where it's like kind of off the screen. And then we're just going to move this position to where it kind of goes with it. And we'll replay that. I think that looks great. So now that we have that, we're going to go back into our original composition. We'll see that the animation is already there. So what we're going to do is drag it back to that zero zero mark. That way we know where to start. And we're going to move this rectangle off the side of the screen. Again, start that keyframe. This is what I was saying about it making it easier to animate that green screen effect. Because you can see exactly where your animation needs to stop and where your green screen needs to stop. And all you have to do is line up these keyframes to match. frame and move this all the way back to the end hit space let it play out so you'll see that the green screen kind of moves a little bit faster at the beginning there we're just gonna slow that down a little bit. We'll make it to where it starts a little bit after the first transition starts to move. And we'll make sure it doesn't lag behind later. Perfect. So that's how you make this transition. I added a little bit of animation in there and if you have Adobe Illustrator, you can bring in layers from there and create even crazier transitions, animate your entire logo in the behind. You can make some really clean stuff with this technique. I'm not gonna do that yet, but as we get more comfortable with this, it's gonna be a lot easier to do.
So I hope this tutorial was a lot easier to understand than the last one. Um, audio definitely should be better because watching that video again was very painful. Um, but thanks to everyone who requested that I just remake the video, make it easier to understand. Here it is. And I hope you guys enjoy it. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. Help me get into the algorithm. Help this video get some more people. And thanks.